You know, as you know, the entire goal of this particular video series is to take you from wherever you are, you know, to a high level of skill and hopefully making master class in one of the sports or higher. Um, and here's the deal. I can give you technique. I can give you all of the drills in the world. I can teach you those things. But without the mental game, the mental side of things, you'll never accomplish your goal in the end. And let me tell you a little story. Over the years, with my first book and my podcast and a lot of different areas, I have interviewed, spent time with, talked to, and personal friends with the best shooters on the planet. And when you look at the difference between those shooters and the people that maybe are, are less accomplished, one thing stands out, and that's their mental toughness. Now, here's the deal. When you're looking at a mental toughness training system or any system, there are a million different books and videos out there on the mind side of things, the mental side of things. But the reality is that mental toughness and that confidence can never exist unless you put the work in. So that's my first point to you. The work has to be done. There's no simple set of mental exercises you can do that will allow you to overcome a lack of skill. So you've got to have confidence based on your training. Hard work, of course, is what's going to take you there. The goal of your mental game has to be confidence under pressure. Because when you're doing your training drills and you're working your technique, you're not training to do well at the drills. You're training yourself to be good at those skills under pressure. So when you look at pressure, the first thing that you need to accept and understand is pressure doesn't actually exist. And I know you might be saying, well, of course it exists. I feel it every time, but you can't actually prove it to me. You can't necessarily measure it, although you may have an increase in your heart rate and your breathing and your anxiety levels that may be physically measurable to an extent, but pressure doesn't really exist. So where does it come from? You know, pressure comes from us putting ourselves in a situation and then attaching an importance to that situation. That's where pressure comes from. So the goal of your mental game has to be to develop that confidence under pressure. Where does that come from? Of course, that comes from your training. It comes from some of your mental tools, and it comes from experience. But without those things in that order, you'll never have that confidence. And I'll give you a perfect example. I could give you a set of voodoo mental mindset exercises, you know, something like, um, visualize your success and read a little card every single day, five or six or 20 times per day. But without the hard work, without the effort, all those mental tools, all those little tricks will do nothing for you. There's no amount of mindset or mental training you can do that will overcome a lack of hard work. So the key to mental toughness is self-control. So how do you develop that level of self-control? Well, we start with our skill. You have to go into the event that's going to create pressure in your mind because you've attached importance to it, knowing that you have the skill to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. That's the bottom line. Because without that skill, nothing exists. So that self-control starts with developing the skill. The second part of the equation is learning to control yourself. And we can do that in a lot of different ways. We can set ourselves up for success by learning that, once again, pressure doesn't actually exist. It's something we've created in our mind. And the second you accept that, you realize that, hey, if you've created pressure, you can also remove it from your mindset as well, to an extent. You can start to create an element of calmness as well. So let's talk about developing that self-control. I'm gonna give you a few tools. And when we're talking about controlling things, first of all, I want you to focus on controlling your ability. That comes from the hard work, we've discussed that. The second thing I want you to learn to do is to control the physical byproducts of the pressure that we create in our mind. So, what does that mean? What is a physical byproduct? A physical byproduct of that theoretical pressure is probably an increase in your heart rate and probably an increase in your breathing. So. When our heart rate increases to a certain point, let's say it's above 120 to 130 beats per minute and starts to go higher and higher, that in itself 
will disrupt what we're trying to accomplish in the shooting environment. So to control our heart rate and our breathing, we can intentionally breathe with a purpose. So let's talk about that. When we're talking about breathing, a couple things we want to focus on. Number one, we want to breathe in through our nose. Nasal breathing has the effect of lowering your heart rate. If we use nasal breathing effectively, that means that when I take that breath in, I need to take that breath in and completely fill my lungs, okay? So a lung full of air through the nose and then exhalation. So how do you do that on the range? Because you're already feeling some stress. My recommendation is you use a counting method and I'll give you two. You can use what I call the 444, which is an inhalation for a count of four in your head, 1,002, three, four. So you're gonna hold the breath when you're You've done your inhalation, and then you're going to exhale for a count of four. Another method that you might try is six to six. So you would inhale for a count of six, which makes make sure that you fully fill your lungs, hold for those two seconds, and then exhale for that six seconds. Now, think about that breathing technique as a cycle. So if you're using four, 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 you may inhale, hold, exhale. So you may inhale, hold, and exhale. Inhale, hold, and exhale and you're gonna cycle through that pattern as many times as you need to to start to lower your heart rate, to get rid of that anxiety that you've created with the pressure, and then hopefully that starts to have a positive effect on your physical state, and that's the goal. Not necessarily to put ourselves to sleep. We're not trying to do a breath method that will relax us to the point where we're hyper relaxed because remember, in the match, we need that spark. We need that energy, that, that aggressiveness because Ultimately, we're looking at doing something as fast as we can accomplish it under control, and that requires explosive internal and external energy, okay? Now